Lauren, ready yeah. to finish this basement? I'm ready. Come on over. Oh, grab a stack. All right. Gonna teach you how to put this floor in and how to protect it as well. Bingo. Here's the plan. We'll start with the subfloor. That is actually the most important part of this entire process. Doesn't matter what you put down on your basement floor, if it's not protected, it's gonna end up in the garbage eventually. This is your best solution. We wanna keep as much ceiling height as we can. So we have a very thin membrane here. Underneath, see these air channels? Also water channels. So you've got the perforations on there, which are gonna keep the subfloor off of the concrete. It's gonna let it breathe. This concrete slab holds a tremendous amount of moisture depending on what season it is, how hard it's rained, whatever's going on. You want that to be able to breathe and dissipate underneath. So this, basically what it does is it provides everything that you need without overdoing it or adding any organic materials. I haven't worked with any other subfloor that I can do this with. And then I can still use it confidently <laughs> knowing I'm not going to have mold and mildew. So even if you get a flood in your basement, it's going to be protected. All right, we'll start along this wall. It's super okay. simple. You and I are going to do this together. You've got the tongues. You've got the grooves. The key to remembering how to start it, you keep your grooves up against the wall. So we start in our corner, which is nice and square. Next one comes in. It basically just slides together. There's a little bit of, uh, little bit of wiggle room here. If you don't get it in the grooves, you just try again. Here's one of the reasons why it's so user friendly. It's very simple DIY. You don't have to use a saw. You don't have to use any intimidating uh, tools. So if I'm gonna line it up like this, I get my mark. Give myself some room. I got it marked there. Get a nice square, run it along the side, right? So you get perfect, just a nice hard press along there. Now you can use the scissors if you don't like using a big knife like this. Ready? Lots of room there. Boom. Right? Pretty slick? Perfect. Perfect fit. All right, then let's keep going. We should have the whole room done in no time. We're gonna run that dry barrier everywhere, all throughout the laundry room as well. But we've got a lot of obstacles, doorways, and drains to deal with. I think this is one of the biggest questions people have. What we'll do is once we go over the drain, we'll cut a section out that's the size of our width of our flooring. You can actually glue it to the bottom of a piece of flooring and the whole section can pop out. You can always access the drain. And the reason why we can go right over it with that is because we do have those channels underneath. So if there is a flood, let's say the washer, washer here splits, and the water starts to run like crazy. Boom, it's gonna go right underneath. Down the drain. Our floor on top is completely protected. Brilliant, right? Awesome. All right, let's keep going. We're ready to put our floors down with the underlayment it comes with. However, I like to take it one step further, make sure I have a full vapor seal. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna use the tuck tape. So I usually just go the length of one, run it. Length of one, run it. Wait, 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 right there. Put your hand right here. Mm. You thinking what I'm thinking? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do this. You ready to do this? I'm ready. On your marks, get set, go. Pretty basic? Pretty basic. All right, let's hit the seams this way, we'll hit the seams this way, and then we're ready for our finished floor. All right. Okay, that is why they say true protection and comfort. Pretty easy, right? I can't believe how quickly that went. Good job. Nice. Done. For more information, go to drybarrier.com.